Let's do this one. Torvald speaks on the impact of artificial intelligence on programming. I think this is going to be, I think, I'm curious what he has to say. I typically say artificial intelligence is autocorrect on steroids because all a large language model does is it predicts what's the most likely next word that you're going to use and then it. Uh, first off, that's false. As we learned from Avi, the guy who invented friend, it's actually omnipresent and super intelligent and it is like God. So just in case you're wondering, it's not it's not an autocorrect on steroids. It's literally God, literally. It extrapolates from there. So not really very intelligent, but obviously the impact that it has on, on, on our lives and on the reality we live in is, is significant. Do you think we will see LLM written code that is co submitted to you as oh, a pull request? I'm convinced it's gonna happen, yes. I mean, and I'm, it may well be happening already, maybe on a smaller scale where people really use it more as a, as a help in writing code, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's clearly something where automation has always helped people write code. I mean, yeah. this is not anything new at all. Uh, we don't write machine code anymore. We don't even write assembler, and now we're moving on from C to Rust. So uh, I don't see this as something as revolutionary as all the news <laughs> talk is every day about AI. It's not an area I obviously work with. I, I'm still very low level. I, I got into kernels because I love the low level hardware details and that's why I'm still there. But, but so you, you know, for how harsh he responds to quality of code, I'm surprised his response to it was so positive. Yeah, he was very neutral. He was just like, yeah, it exists. I, I, I'm actually, I'm, I, I'm very, very surprised. Wrong you were. Oh, I was definitely wrong. I just assumed it was going to be negative or complex. I was not ready for neutral. I truly was, I was not ready for uh, neutral at all. Um, he's old. It, it's not that, because if you still look at that, you like even today, not even that long ago, there was yet another Linus snippet where he's just like, this is bullshit code. We do this. You make this crap code, right? Like he was very, very intense about his opinion still. And so it's shocking to see that something that's probably going to produce the same kind of code that makes him get very frothy for him to have such a ambivalent opinion about it. He accepted it, but he doesn't like it. I'm not sure if he he never. Well, he just said he's he's all low level in, in that, and he just doesn't use it, right? That nothing about that says he was positive or negative. I think he's neutral because it's not in his wheelhouse by his own admission. Yeah, which is a pretty good. By the way, that's pretty good way to go about things. If you don't even have an if you've never really used it and explored it, it's shocking how many people have such strong opinions about these with very little understanding. Like what I see a lot today is people that have only ever used LLMs or were never they never actually got all that good at programming to begin with and they use LLMs and then talk about how they're now 10x better. And it's just like, well, you never really got, you don't even know the other side. You actually have no idea what it's like to be good at it. So therefore you saying you're 10x better, you, yes, you're probably 10x better than you were because you were bad, but that doesn't necessarily mean you even know what good is. Or, this, uh, or the other way around where someone didn't use LMs. Yes, I also hate that too. I, I, I strongly dislike when people are like, oh, I used it for five minutes and turned it off. It's like, no, you got to use it for a long time. You really do got to use it for quite some time to really make sure you actually understand if it's good or bad. Like I'm still, I, I'm still using the Jippity side of things as my next level of exploration to, just to make sure that I understand it. But I, I really did not like Copilot that much. And I used it for a year straight. Now I'm going to use the Jeopardy side of things like Claude Solnet for hopefully the next six months. I'm going to use it more regularly and try hard to actually see if I can like it. And if I like it, then at least I know, okay, this was a good thing or no, I really disliked it and this is why. Maybe there's some things I'm missing. And I think that that's a good way to go about things. You expect this can help people write code. This can help people get started. But then if we look at the previous conversation and the, the challenges around code reviews and maintaining, so do you think that large language models will get to the point that they can help us review code, that they can help maintain subsystems? I hope, I hope, because that's certainly one of the areas where 
which I see them really being able to shine, to find the obvious stupid bugs. Because, I, I mean, how many people here are actually programmers in this room? A lot. So, uh, a fair number. A lot of the bugs I write, write, a lot of the bugs I see other people write, they're not like subtle bugs. A lot of them are just the stupid bugs that you did not think about, and you don't need any kind of higher intelligence to find them. But having, having tools that warn, I mean, we have compilers that warn about the obvious, really obvious ones, but having LLMs that warn about slightly more subtle cases where, where it may just say, this pattern does not look like the regular pattern. Are you sure this is what you mean? And, and I'm curious if he's familiar with all the problems curl has had. I know that's a pretty nuanced take there, but curl is really struggling with it because the amount of just of these bugs that are being, you know, reported as security problems, like there's one in curl right now. And I've talked about this plenty of times, but if you don't know, there's one in curl where it goes like this. If it does like a Sterling, you know, it doesn't fit within some sort of buffer, then some sort of error, right? It returns some sort of error. Then it goes on to do a stir, uh, stir copy instead of a stir end copy. And like this is identified as big, glaring, giant, uh, big, giant, big, giant security risk. And the current maintainer of curl is just like, no, nah, that's not because of right here. Are you sure? Have you actually made this go wrong? And the person's like, certainly I have. If you look at this code and he's like, that code doesn't even exist. Where did you get that code from? It's nowhere in this repository certainly see if you look right here and he's just like wait what like you're not listening to any of my problems here you're you're just stating things that aren't even true like he argued with the llm for some amount of time oh i see my mistake now it was this i remember that article yeah and it was really like it was it was genuinely sad to watch this interaction because you know that someone is using this not as a weapon but believing that it can do some good things now Maybe at some point in the future it can get there. And that's what I think uh, he's saying is that at some point in the future, he's going to get to the point or LLMs are going to get to the point where they're able to spot these bugs and be able to do that. But like as of right now, they're nowhere close to it. And maybe there's some set of bugs you could train it on that are really, really obvious. But I feel like if it got to that specific level, wouldn't you just rather make like a linter or some sort of LSP or some sort of compiler warning that it was so easy that you could just have a... Uh, a compiler do that? I don't know. It's it feels a little bit funny. The answer may be no. That was not at all what I meant. The, you found an obvious bug. Thank you very much. So uh, I do think that LLMs are going to be a big. You call them disparagingly, uh, like autocorrects on steroids. And I actually think that they're way more than that. And how most people work is. We all are autocorrects on steroids to some degree. Uh, and I, I see that as a tool that can help us be better at what we do. But I've always been optimistic. The whole uh, hopeful. hopeful was the hopeful. word you yes, had. Yes. Uh, hopeful. hopeful and humble. Uh, hopeful and humble, that's my middle name. Uh, <laughs> but, but He is positive. He is a positive guy. I, I mean, I'm glad that he's hopeful. I think I think my big problem that I, I I've come across uh, come across is that I don't work in the same arena that he does. He's in a very selective dev arena, in which is filled with people that are really 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 good. One would assume that the people with whom Linus is code reviewing are probably really good devs, gen generally speaking, and so. Maybe that's part of the reason why he can be as hopeful as he is, because the the impact of what's around there is not quite the same size as, say, perhaps the things you see on Twitter. Whereas, you know, on my side, we're seeing people calling it godlike, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Maybe that's perhaps I'm overly negative. Maybe I need to become less overly negative. And I think that that's real. I think that that's a very real thing. That's why I do try it is because I really don't want to bamboozle myself with my own uh like preconceived notions. And humble, that's my middle name. Uh, <laughs> but, but on the other hand, I mean, I have been so optimistic that 
32 years ago, I was stupid enough to think that you can write a better kernel than anybody else. So <laughs> Nice. That's a good kernel. Getting some Ws here. <laughs> you have to kind of be a bit, bit too optimistic at times to, to make a difference. So uh, my approach to OLMs really has been that, hey, this is wonderful. This is going to... I love seeing the optimism. Yeah. I don't necessarily share yeah. it. No, a lot of people disagree but with it. One of the things that I worry about in all this is we see the hallucinations. We see, yeah. and, and that's a technical term for LLMs, they do hallucinate and they do make up stuff. And so the more they are being put into the position where they will automatically do things without an actual human being there to catch them, the yeah. more this becomes scary. Not scary as in they will, they will rule the world and not in the sci-fi sense, but in the so many bugs that will happen and that will affect our lives or our code. Well, I see the bugs that happen without them every day, so that's, that may be why I'm not so worried. I, I, I think we're doing those just fine on our own. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I don't think I can end the AI topic on a better uh, 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 highlight, so let's, let's go from, from there to, to... Okay, okay, exactly. I'm not sure what the exactly is. Because at the end of the day, we have to manage it. So. We did talk, like, this was a very important thing that we talked about, which is there was this, like, with Tractor, there was this automatic translation from C code to Rust code. And I forget the company's name that was a part of this article, but a big thing that they talked about is not using AI to do the auto magic translation from one language to another, but instead manually doing it. And by manually doing it, their team was superior at it. They understood the problem all the way through. They were able to actually um, know where the bugs were, understand the very small nuanced things. And so the more that there is this LLM intervention, the less you know the actual problem. That's gonna, th there is most certainly a lot to that where you don't have the skill to flex. You just simply have the problem that's solved and sure, Maybe it writes the same amount of errors we do. Maybe it writes 1.1 amount of errors. So then people would naturally say, well, if it just writes 10% more errors, then couldn't we just super scale people? Well, no, because you, you don't have that nuance then, right? You don't have that nuance of understanding the problem. Therefore, super scaling can't really exist. We need really good automated tests to test code by LLMs. I mean, again, there's such a leap in there, right? If the thing is, is that if you could write good enough tests now, I'll say it this way. If goodness, if good enough tests existed now, I would believe that. I don't think good enough tests exist now. Therefore, I believe that statement doesn't exist. Surely that was a joke. Surely that was a joke. It was not. I don't think that was a joke. I just don't think you can, what test? <laughs> That's probably the more appropriate way to phrase that. But I just don't think that you can prove that we even have good enough tests now to be able to make that. Did you not see what happened with CrowdStrike? Apparently they had all the tests in the world is what they're telling us. They had every last test in the world. They simply had tests. Here's the kicker. They had a channel file generated with the correct number of inputs or their testing file, whatever it was, whatever you call that thing that they generated, right? They had their stuff generated with the correct amount of inputs Therefore, it would not fail, but the real world one was different than the one they tested. They mocked. Mocks got them. They literally got mocked. They got taken out to dinner, dinner purchased, a glass of wine, and then mocked hard. All right? If correct, then, yeah, then work. Yeah, they got, they got mocked, really. You're going to, let's see, you're going to and mocked up, boy? Yeah, dude, you got, you got, they went off and got mocked up, right? It's crazy. Anyways, uh, it's a learning day, that crowd strike. Yeah, so... I mean, that's, I think what, I think the real problem is this, is that LLMs probably are really great if you don't sacrifice your understanding. I think that's probably where I'm coming to on my, on my understanding of the, uh, of the codes is if you understand the nuance of the problem, then it's probably not bad to use an LLM. If you don't understand the nuances to the problem and every last little detail, then I'm not sure if it's good to use them. And that's kind of where I've come to. And that, I think, is a 
good experiential take. Because even when I understood the problem well, and I was using LLMs, I, or I was using Copilot at that time, I found that I was making a lot of mistakes. I like a lot of mistakes. A lot of my bugs were all LLM based and I was getting really upset about it. That, you know, that's one of my motivations for turning it off. I was just so frustrated because even when I knew the problem and I knew the problem space, I, I just kept getting bit because I thought I saw correct, I thought I saw correct code. I didn't write it. So I think my engagement factor is probably smaller. Yes. In the end, like you said earlier, hacks built on hacks. People just don't have time not to use AI. I'm not sure if that's, I don't know if that's true. See, the problem is, is I actually draw a completely separate conclusion here. Hacks on hacks is the reason why people don't have time to let an AI do it. It's because they don't understand all the reason, all the prior reasons for it. I mean, most of the bugs I ever did in production were always because I misunderstood some facet of the world that only existed in rare events in production. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's... I, 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 I'm curious if they do actually make you dumber. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm not there. I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not on that part yet. But I'm definitely on the please be an experienced dev if you're going to use it. Anyways, that was kind of an interesting one. I'm actually, I'd say the biggest takeaway I have is that Linus is shockingly positive when it comes to LLMs for someone who is shockingly negative about people's code. That, I think, was a really difficult juxtaposition for me to have in my head. Because I, I, I'm really, like, struggling trying to balance those things. I think he just expects more of humans. I would, too. Yeah, that's fair. But he's rarely negative. Well, he's very negative on code reviews. Like he's classically known to be a very negative person on code reviews. The amount, I, the the amount of this code is shit per minute that he has probably produced is an order of magnitude higher than the next person. So I'm just that's my biggest one is that uh, you only read about his negative reviews. That's fair. That's actually probably fair. Maybe that's because of just the sheer happenstance of how the internet works, that I've only been exposed to one side of things. Therefore, I don't know the other side of things. That's very true. That's actually probably the truest thing ever. All right, hey, the name. The name. Ajen. 